Welcome to the RepairKey 1.16 walkthrough. This video will show off the new and updated features available with RepairKey 1.16. The first major update we will dive into is with QSite, our web-based customer engagement toolset. Available with select RepairKey plans, QSite opportunities will be embedded into your website to help engage your online visitors. Your customers now have the ability to search for a location, drill down on the device and type of repair they need, receive a quote for the repair, then book an appointment. If you're not on RepairQ Advanced or Professional, please reach out to your rep or support team to use this awesome feature. Let's walk through the setup process. You'll need to be an admin to access all of these settings. If you head over to Company Settings and then QSite, you'll see several new options. Let's start from the top and work down. The Embed settings show you how to insert the correct code into your website to make QSite available to your customers. Grab the code of your choice via copy, then paste the snippet into your site where you want it displayed. Click on Theme to brand the page to fit your customer standards and lingo. Add your primary color code, turn on or off navigation, and configure your error handling. Locations allows you to set a map search range, number of returned locations, and a few content options. Make sure to turn on or off specific locations in your database, especially if some are warehouses or testing locations. Request types is where you configure the workflow for your customers. In order for this to function, you'll need to first configure categories for your repair services, devices, parts, labor, etc. We work through those steps a little later in the video. Once you have those configured, you can enable service request types here and add your content. Next, let's turn on Repairs and select a category of Repair Devices. If you have added images to those categories and catalog items, flip the switch to show those images. Set up your content however you'd like. Now if you set up compatibility in your catalog so that only certain repairs are connected to certain devices, flip this switch, specify what you want shown, and adjust your content. Once you're all finished, be sure to click Save. Next, click Contact Form to adjust the content displayed when requesting info from your customer, and click Save. Now click on Quotes. If you want your customers to see prices for the items you've selected to show on the previous request type settings, flip that switch and set up the displayed content. If you don't want your prices displayed, don't flip that switch and set up your content that will display, then click Save. Enabling appointment will allow your customers to book a slot for their repair using your location's business hours and appointment configuration settings. Adjust your displayed content and click Save. You can set up your notification emails for appointments from inside communications and then notifications found here. Here's a quick view of what this would look like configured. Up next, let's chat about categories. Categories give you the ability to create multiple trees and grids within your catalog. Organizing items with categories and leveraging compatibility helps organize a diverse repair shop's catalog of services and parts. One visual use case for this is with QSite opportunities, referenced earlier. Another example is for using category drill downs when adding repair devices, trade-in items, and ticket items at the point of sale. There are two ways to access them. We will check out the visual item grids first, then head into the trees after. 
If you have admin access, head over to Company Settings, Catalog, and then Item Grids, and you'll see the default category grid we've loaded for you. Select any item, and you can drill down into each subcategory. As you drill down, you'll see the breadcrumb navigation changing, allowing you to go up as many levels as you want. To create a new category or subcategory at any point, navigate to where you want to put it, click the plus icon on the right side, and select Category. Give it a name and a priority order, attach an image, and save. Once you're at the end of your line, you can attach certain catalog items to that subcategory by clicking the plus, and select Catalog Items. Filter however you want, and select all you want to add. Now when you, at the point of sale, or your customers, on your website, drill down through the grid, the correct items will populate for them. Categories can be built with multiple layers, which we call trees. Within each tree, multiple branches can be created to help organize things. In repair shops, common variables could include manufacturers, models, colors, or service problems. Head over to Company Settings, Categories, and then Category Trees to see the tree layout. Use the arrows to show or hide categories or trees. Click the pencil icon to edit, and use the plus button to add new ones. You can also drag and drop categories and catalog items into new places. We provided a good number of default images for different types of devices, services, and parts, but click Category Images to manage your library. One last place to manage categories and item grid is from within Company Settings, and then Tickets, and General Settings. We've shifted a couple of miscellaneous settings around and created this new section specifically for this release. You'll find settings for each ticket function to use on the grid and to specify which parent or root category to start with. Make those selections and you'll be set. Here's a quick demo of how this looks when building a repair ticket. Now let's chat about compatibility. With 1.16, you can now use catalog item compatibility to associate a parent catalog item with one or more compatible children catalog items. You can enforce business practices and decrease ticket transaction time by eliminating non-compatible items. Compatibility can be set up for devices to enforce compatible services, parts, or other items, and compatibility can be set up for item bundles to enforce a restricted list of items that can be bundled under any parent item. Let's walk through setting this up. For my example, I'll mark iPhone XR parts and services as the only items compatible with the iPhone XR. If you have catalog item add and edit permissions, head over to your catalog. In my example, I'll locate the iPhone XR using the filters, then click the new link icon to pull up compatibility. You'll find tabs for services, parts, and other. Click on services, then you can search for the iPhone XR services in the box, or use the advanced search to drill down and attach your services, screen replacement, battery replacement, rear camera replacement, etc. Once you're done there, click parts and locate the compatible XR parts, LCD digitizer, battery, rear camera, etc. If you need to remove any items, click the red X under actions. Now you have your full lineup of compatible parts and services to the iPhone XR, so when you have that device in a repair ticket, only these items will be available. One step further into compatibility is auto bundling. Save yourself time and reduce human error by setting up auto bundles in advance, so child items get added to the bundle automatically as soon as parent items are added. Let's use the iPhone XR example. If you are using RepairQ's service bundle SKU system and use parent and child items, you're gonna love this. If you're an admin, head into Company Settings, Catalog, and then Item Types. Let's check to make sure we have our parent bundle item types set as the parent and our part item types as the child. If you don't have access to this, no problem. Next, head over to your catalog. Locate the item that you want to set up as the parent in the bundle. For my XR example, let's use the XR screen replacement service. Click on the link icon to set up the bundle. 
look up the parts you want to add as child items under this bundle. If you attach an LCD and adhesive every time, check the boxes next to each one, add them to the list, and check each box to auto bundle the part. Now I'll head over to a repair ticket with an XR as the repair device and add my XR screen replacement bundle. Check it out. The screen and adhesive are in there too. There are many other ways to utilize this feature, so get creative. Accessory bundle sales, warranty bundles, device bundles that come with a charger, screen protector, whatever you can think of. All contact and customer forms have a new interface designed to speed up customer intake by focusing on satisfying required fields as quickly as possible. The general tab is what you see first, which includes required info plus a couple of other key items. Other profile info can be found in the other tabs. As you fill out the form, RepairQ automatically checks for an existing match to prevent duplicate records. To help your staff focus on the right steps after identifying a customer, we created a new open item alert which loads any existing transactions or opportunities that are open for a customer to continue or convert. This feature should speed up customer intake and reduce duplicate tickets. In addition, this feature helps you maintain accurate opportunity conversion rates for quotes and appointments. You may have some customers who constantly have open items that you may not wish to be alerted of. Simply head to their profile, click the miscellaneous tab, and check the boxes for the item alerts you'd like suppressed. We've also added a few updates to the invoicing module. If you're on a plan that supports billing agents and invoicing, these will benefit you. Currently, when you create an invoice that has more than 100 or so tickets attached to it, the time it takes to load, process, and remit payments is pretty long. With 1.16, we've improved performance and scalability for large invoices. In addition, you're now able to manually input the payment date and revenue date if you'd like them to be different than the current date. Payment date is the day that will show as the transaction date in your cash flow records. This date must be on or later than the date the ticket was advanced to waiting for payment. Revenue date is the date in which the revenue and sales are accounted on. If you want the sales for these tickets to be counted in the previous month that ended while waiting for payment, you can enter a date that is on or later than the date the ticket was advanced to waiting for payment. There's now a new appointments dashboard in Business Intelligence. If you have access to the analytics dashboards, you'll see the new dashboard. We've also made some adjustments to receipts and invoice print settings to more clearly reflect the available options. We've added a billing agent filter and column to most of the accounting reports. Quotes can now be attached to appointments for opportunity conversion through QSite. The announcement settings received a select all locations option, which will allow you to create an email or dashboard announcement for all locations with a single click. The integrations page from within company or location settings has been revamped. You now see a separation between the integrations that are currently enabled and those that are still available for use. A few other minor tweaks have been made, so be sure to see the full release notes in the community under the development updates section for a full list of everything in this release. We hope you enjoy 1.16.